Fisherman Rothman, Anthony Rothman in here. Bo's off today. Uh, wanted to talk a little football, and the man to do that with is the former Buckeye lineman, Matt Finkus, the pride of Piqua, in the house. How you doing, my friend? Always good, buddy. I'm always good when I'm here. Good to see you. I, uh, okay, so I, I think you were in there at the time in the other studio there uh, when I talked about the stars and, and ranking these classes. And, yeah. <laughs> and, okay, so you're coming out of high school. I was a two-star athlete. Two-star. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Two maybe stars. they didn't even have stars when you came. It, it might not it, have been. It might not. They might not have had a star. They, it might have been, you know, who knows, like leather helmets. Huh? <laughs> so, two leather helmets at the time. But, so uh, what happened? So how'd you, how'd, what was your recruitment like from Ohio State? Now, you're a two-star guy. Why would? Um, it was still, I mean, I, was, I chose between Ohio State and Michigan and Notre Dame. I mean, I had all those offers. It's just, you know, at the time there, I think there was maybe two ranking services. It's, it's, it's a little bit mm-hmm. different. So, yes. if one, so if one guy didn't like you, then, you know, you immediately dropped mm-hmm. down and into the thing. But, and I think that coaches took a lot more ownership of the, you know, of the ratings and, and that kind of thing, as opposed to, to today, when you've got 18 different services and it's internet based and there's Twitter and all those other things where uh, the stars are kind of dictated to the coaches instead of the other way around. Which, but I think that there's still, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, the coaches that I talk to, you know, they're still the ones making the decision. Uh, you know, the recruiting services and things like that are, are, are good to let you know who else is on board and who else has been talking to them. Let me ask you a question about, okay, so you're a two-star guy, so you obviously got a lot to prove. You had the big offers, but still you don't come in as the big household name. Um, did that work for you? It, can it be a an opposite where you get a guy who's a can't-miss five-star that may not be – may rely on talent more than – I really have to prove myself? You know, I think there's probably a lot more pressure coming in as a five-star guy. Uh, If you're a guy that's coming in with all those accolades and all that stuff, uh, you know, I mean, going back to my era, you look at Ron Paulus, you know, that went to Notre Dame, who coming out of high school, they're talking, oh, this guy's going to win four Heisman trophies and, you know, ends up having a a very mediocre career at Notre Dame. You know, a lot of that probably has to do with pressure. Uh, You know, when you come in as a a guy who's just, you know, worked hard his whole life and and you're grateful for the opportunity that's given to you, you're going to go in and and try to show the coaches that they made the right decision by giving you a scholarship. Uh, His name is Matt Fink. He's played uh, big-time defensive line for the Buckeyes in the 90s, the glory days, the days that really (laughs) – does it bother you? I got a feeling that these days are we getting into could be the glory days. Yes, you're right. It was the glory (laughs) days as far as talent was concerned because we knew you guys were dripping with talent. And uh, maybe that was, I would hate to say that was the biggest weakness. Sometimes when you have so much individual talent that uh, you know you're a great team because you have a bunch of talent, but are you really a, gr- a team at times? And you guys were, clearly. Um, yeah, and, 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 you know, you talk about those teams, and I, I, I think that people realize, and that's what I think kind of got lost this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know Urban played it up a lot. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, to go undefeated in college football, I mean, if you look, there's maybe one team a year. A lot of times there isn't even anyone who does it out of the 115, 120 teams. It is, you know, virtually, I mean, your odds are astronomical to be able to do that. Uh, and for us to come out with, you know, a one loss or, 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 or you know, a two loss season every now and then was, it was still pretty decent. Uh, Matt Finkus, uh, were you uh, surprised or were you disappointed when – People talked about like the silver bullets. I mean, you guys were the silver bullets. Is it okay? <laughs> have you guys granted? Have you grandfathered this Ohio you State know, defense? Into, you know, my wife allowed to use it. My wife put it on my Twitter. One of the original silver bullets. So you know, I, I got to thank Fred Pugich. I mean, he's the one who I think who kind of came up with that. Obviously, uh, you know, no uh, no official connection, but I think Coors Light was just coming out at the time <laughs> when I was in college. So maybe that's kind of where it came from a little bit, but. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, I think it's a, it's a great honor. I mean, you know, it would be great for it to become a tradition, um, kind of like the Nebraska black shirt defense right. was back in the 90s. Uh, you know, something for those guys to work towards and, and, and to, to have as a goal. So uh, if that's what it's going to do and if that can motivate those guys, I'm all for it. You uh, obviously know Luke Fickle very well, uh, Mike Vrabel. Did these guys really have to prove themselves to Urban Meyer? I know he he had some affection for Luke and what he did yeah. and how he held the program together, despite you know not a great year season wise. But they beat Wisconsin that year at home mm-hmm. on homecoming, and he had that signature win uh, when people beat Russell Wilson in Wisconsin, yeah. and then had the world in front of him, and then it didn't go well at the end of the year. But um, I know he 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 gave him kind of that. That pat on the back, like, man, you, you have a future in this business. And I still think Urban is at the point where he thinks he's a great mind, a good coach. But did these guys have to prove themselves to Urban in another way in recruiting? Because I always remember, Matt, hearing Urban kind of not 
give Rabes that, well, he's got the rings, but I got to see if he can do it yeah. in recruiting. Is yeah, that a fact? A- absolutely. Absolutely yeah. a fact. Uh, you know, I, th- I think that everyone knows about the conversation that, that Urban had with Luke, and he, I think he had a previous relationship. They'd spoken at conferences and things like that before. But um, I know that the vetting process went on pretty heavily with Mike, you know, as far as uh, Urban calling Belichick. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's funny. I, I went down to the, like, to the last bowl practice they had at Ohio State before they left, and Urban was there. And Jen, Mike's wife, was there, right. and, we're, and we're talking, and her kids are running around, and my kids are running around. And she's yelling at, at, at Tyler and Carter, like, hey, behave, because Dad does not have a job yet. So don't make any <laughs> bad moves here in front of Urban. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that was definitely a, a big key, uh, you know, for Mike to be able to, And Mike has that personality where he's going to be able to go in, and he's a no-nonsense guy. He's going to tell you exactly what it is. And I think that a lot of parents and kids respect that. When you, cut, when you hear so much how wonderful and how great your kid is, and then you have a coach come in and say, look, you know, he's going to have to earn it at Ohio State. It, you know, we want him to hear, and we think that we can make him better, but he's going to have to earn it as well. I think that it adds a lot of respect. Boy, you're in the trenches with Fickle, too. I mean, you, you, you lived yeah. and died with these guys as brothers, and it's uh, – describe what that's like, suiting up with a guy like that, now watching him on the staff with Urban and that sort of thing. I mean, you guys probably have great stories, but you really, you really watch none Luke – None that we're telling no, you. No, I'm today. sure no. we can't tell too many. <laughs> uh, we'll do those off the air. But, but you have seen a guy – I mean, let's we they want they want to call you guys men in college, but I went to college too. Okay, we weren't quite men just yet. <laughs> we thought we were. We were kings of the world. But you you've seen this guy now evolve from a, yeah. a guy in college. You suit up and he's the nose guard. You're the you're uh, right now. You know you're in that line. Um, what impresses you the most about Luke Fickle? I, I think that it's impressed me the uh, transition that he's made into. Um, what I believe he can be a head coach here in the very near future. I, th- I think that he has that in him. I think, you know, just talking to him, uh, you know, when he started out at Akron, uh, you know, going up and seeing him a couple of those games and, and talking to him and seeing him and, and watching how he's evolved as a coach and, and then as an evaluator of talent and as a recruiter and, and, and all those things that comes into being a college coach, I think just watching him develop – and get on that path and then doing things the right way has been been huge for him. Uh, some of these guys coming in, uh, talking to Matt Finkus, former starter and defensive line for Ohio State in the 90s, uh, just teams dripping with talent. Uh, you you know the names, Finkus, Garnett, Fickle, Vrabel, Katz and Moyer, uh, Sean Springs, Ty Howard. I can go through the whole list, Damon Moore. I mean, it was just, just a, a pro bowl of talent. Uh, the one guy that jumps out to you of the recruits coming in, is there one guy? You know, I, I've seen Joey Boza. We talked about him a little bit yep. in person. Uh, he he most reminds me of that Andy Katz and Moyer. How is this guy 18 years old and, and showing up yeah. here? Uh, you know, he was at Friday Night Lights, and, and I, I'm watching him. Like, I talked to Mike. I'm like, who is that kid? He's 6'5", like, 270. Oh, he's, just, yeah. he's a mountain of uh-huh. a person. And he, he kind of strikes me as that guy with his quickness in his hands as well. You know, very physical with his hands, which is which you have to be to play defensive line. He can be that impact uh, three technique, I think, you know, almost in the lines of, of, of you know, what we saw with Hankins, you know, in the, along the big daddy kind of lines. I think he has that potential if he's able to live up to it. Um, you know, obviously a lot of the speed and the talent, uh, you know, you watch some of these guys on, you know, their, their highlight reels and everything. It, it's incredible what they're able to do at the high school level. Uh, you know, the, the big jump or the big advantage, I think, right now is the number of kids that come in early. I mean, having that experience and having that lifting experience, having that spring practice experience, I think that the lifting is actually more important than the spring practice. I mean, you come in and you lift for three hours a day, every day. No high school kid is doing that. I don't care how dedicated you are. You're going in and you're kind of working out a little bit here and there. But, I mean, these kids coming in, working with Mariotti, I mean, being in there for three hours a day and doing the, the conditioning and the lifting is going to be a huge advantage for those six guys that came in early. Matt, that's crazy you touched on it. I was just going to ask you. That's what I was thinking because – you know, we, we hear about it now over the you know last couple of years about how many kids are coming in early, yeah, and the advantage that they have with just just the playbook. The, but like, I think, like you said, the the working out, oh, the, the physical, seeing how yeah. yeah, you 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 get a chance to work with these trainers already. You firsthand, you're getting to work out, so you have a head start before the season even comes up. Because I mean, I know when you played it, and and when I was coming out of school. You know, guys weren't going to school early to, no. to start training and working out. <laughs> no, they're we going, got to school, they're going to prom. Exactly. You know? They're, they're we had to go out. to prom and stuff like that, you know, and, and guys were coming in much lighter. Now these kids, by the time they play their first game, they're already like half a season in. And, yeah. and maturity-wise, body-wise, they are so far advanced. It's just, it's just mind-boggling. And I see a lot of kids working hard 
so that they can come to school a little early. And and I think that's just such a plus. It's such a big plus for them. Matt Fink is uh, former Buckeye defensive starter. Let me wrap you up with this, Matt. Was there some? Was there a guy that? Uh, well, I'll give you a couple questions. Was there a guy that you played with? that came in beside yourself, maybe a low-star guy or a guy that didn't get the household name that you respected more than anyone you played with? I, I mean, think, you know, you look at uh, Greg Belisari, Ryan Miller. Linebackers. You know, the, yep. the, those guys that came in and, and you know, you're, you're coming in, you're stepping in for Craig Powell, you're stepping in for Lorenzo Styles. you know, guys with first-round, third-round draft picks and coming in and, and guys that just, you know, work their tail off every day. I mean, th- those guys, you know, came in and, and you knew – uh, you know, obviously not as physically gifted as a Craig Powell, but they were going to be in the right spot every single time, doing the right things and, and making the right calls. You know, th- those kind of guys that, that just brought their lunch pail to work every day, you know, you got to love playing with guys like that. Mm-hmm. Would you have loved to have played for Urban in the situation where he gets you guys in the old, in the block to gun? And you guys, oh, yeah. Get, I mean, how, <laughs> oh, much, yeah. how, how much did you love that at the spring game when he's when he had the he had the quarterbacks yeah, when you doing had the quarterbacks, it? Quarterbacks, you franchise know, guy. It, it was. Uh, I probably wouldn't have liked it when Corey and Orlando were the tackles as much. <laughs> hey, know, Matt, but, come on here. Yeah, yeah, come on here with Orlando. Like that's ah, okay. I'm my shoulders bothering me today, but um, but you know, I mean, that's that's one thing I think Coach Cooper did a lot of, and that Urban's getting back to is you know we went ones versus ones. You know, we'd do you know the the, the inside run drill. It was ones versus ones, and. You'd have to line up. I mean, there wasn't anywhere to go. You had Corey on one side and Orlando on the other. There wasn't a whole uh, lot of options there to, uh, you know, to, 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 know to, to hide. Yeah, know I mean, to hide. Know you had, to pick your poison. So, uh, you know, seeing them get back to that kind of accountability and competition, I mean, you, you can see it all the way through what they do with their winter, winter conditioning. Uh, you know, it, it's great that that is coming back to Ohio State. Great to see you. I hope you're stopping you too, again buddy. soon. Anytime, man. Uh, you know me. I can, I can just keep going forever. <laughs> but we got to move on. We got – 